outer points of your diamonds have been trimmed. You've decided your layout. And the next step is to cut the pieces that are going to be your background pieces. These background pieces are actually going to be triangles and you're going to be cut from squares. If I deconstruct what we have on the table here, you can see what's going to happen. The larger triangles are going to come from squares and the smaller ones are going to come from squares as well. Now when you look at the technique sheet, it's going to give you uh, size squares to cut. You'll notice that with the larger size blocks, anything that's larger than 12 inches, from your 12 inches up to your 24 inches, you're actually going to cut two different size squares to produce those large triangles and those small triangles. But if you're making any of the smaller blocks, you're going to simply cut a single square and from that single square you're going to cut a line or you're going to cut small and large triangles from the single square by cutting a quarter of an inch away from the center. The other thing that I'd like to note is that when we did the very first printing of the Blazing and Lemoyne technique sheets we had some sizes for the 8 inch block and the 10 inch blocks for those background squares that are close, but they're a little too close. So we've decided to up those sizes a little bit. So the eight inch size we upped actually to three and three quarter inches for the size squares that you will cut and then cut like this. And for the 10 inch, we suggest now the four and a quarter. That change has been made. It's been noted on our the pattern revision on our website. But me, if you've got one of those early technique sheets, just take a Sharpie marker, mark it out, put three and three quarters for your eight and four and one quarter for your 10 and you're going to be cutting squares into triangles that give you a little more wiggle room. Once you've got those pieces cut, it's time for you to head off to your sewing machine and put these together. And you're going to put these together like we would for the rest of our rapid fire Lemoyne star processes. I generally like to sew the large triangles on first, give them a press and add the small triangles on next. When you sew those triangles into place, you're going to be producing your A section and your B section, just like you do for the normal uh, Lemoyne stars. Pay attention to the way you press those seams. It's really important that you press the seams the way you're directed to in the uh, technique sheet, and as you see here, so that all your seams are going to nest when you go to build your blazing Lemoyne blocks. So you're going to create four. A sections, four B sections. You have one final step before you put those together, and that is to take the Lemoyne Star Ruler yet again and looking at those same diagonal guidelines that you drew when you trimmed the outer point, you're going to take those same guidelines, position them over top of your sewn seams, and trim those inner points so that you have a very precise 45 degree angle there, and your piece is going to, pieces are going to fit together well, and you're going to have a nice flat center when you're done building your blocks. Something you're going to want to know about doing this trim down. The trim down works very well with the Lemoyne Star Ruler for smaller blocks, but if you're making a block like a 20 inch block, which is what I have here, and you position those 10 inch guidelines on there, what you're going to note is that there's not enough ruler to be able to cut along this edge. So what we recommend is that you team up rulers. You'll take the Lemoyne Star Ruler, line the guidelines up with the seam lines, take a longer ruler, an 18 or 24 inch ruler will work just fine, but it up against the edge of your Lemoyne Star Ruler move that out of place. Now you're going to have a ruler that's long enough for you to be able to cut edge to edge. Do this step carefully. One of these you'll have to cut with the point probably being away from you. The other one you might have to trim this side as well. Do it with the point pointing toward you. Left-handers you just put the ruler on the other side of the block so that when you remove it, you're going to be able to trim left-handed. That's going to give you those sections with a good, true 45-degree angle, and it's going to make for a nice blocks when you put them together. They're going to meet in the middle, and everything's going to lie nice and flat. Now that that trim down is done, you're ready to take those trim sections, sew them together into pairs, sew your pairs together into quadrants, put the block together. The final step in the process is to take your pieced block and actually trim it down and clean it up. It's one of the benefits of the, the rapid fire 
Lemoyne star technique that I've developed is that no matter how rough those outside edges are, they're oversized, and I can then take my favorite trim down ruler, which for me is the Tucker Trimmer, and the Tucker Trimmer 3 I have on my piece here, clean up those edges so that the block is perfectly sized, perfectly square, and all of my points are going to be one quarter of an inch from the edge. Now that you know how to do those blazing Lemoyne blocks, let me show you some variations that I've come up with. So here's one of the variations. It's the one we actually were working on today where we varied the inside and the outside points from the same diamonds in the middle. This is another block that I made that um, kept the center diamonds all the same, but all the outer points were alternated with two different blues. But one of the things I want you to realize is the Blazing Lemoyne star blocks that we've been talking about have a five-star rating as a technique sheet. That means that this is a challenging technique, and really you should be very grounded with the steps and the processes for doing the traditional rapid-fire Lemoyne star before you jump in to making bl your blazing Lemoynes. Now, that being said, one of the things that you can do is you can simplify your blocks by only making half of the block as blazing Lemoyne. The other half of the block can be made with traditional Lemoyne stars so that it's half hard and half easy. That's one way to make it easier. This is another version where half the block is made with a challenging blazing Lemoyne technique and the other half's a simple basket. So consider adding the Blazing Lemoyne technique sheet to your bag of tricks. You can pick it up at your local quilt shop, you can order it online from us, and when you make your Blazing Lemoyne quilts, send us photos. We'll be sure to add them to our gallery.